Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're going to go through the hardest question in this week's contest, which in my opinion, was the hardest contest question we've seen in several weeks. Let's get into it. All right, so we're given an array nums, and we're given this definition of a strong pair. A strong pair is any two numbers x and y, where the absolute difference between x and y is less than or equal to the minimum of x and y. And among all of these strong pairs in nums, we're told to find the largest XOR product between them. All right, so right off the bat, let's start with the key observation. A number represented by the bit string 1000 is going to be larger than all other numbers that start with zero and have the same length. For example, the largest number that is smaller than 1000 is 0111, and you can check for yourself that that's still smaller than 1000. So how does that help us? Well, imagine that we had a fixed bit string s, and we were told to find the number in the array that gives us the maximal XOR value with s. Let's say we have numbers a and b. The first bit of a XORed with the first bit of s gives us a 0, and the first bit of b XORed with s gives us a 1. Without even looking at the rest of the bit string, we already know that the entire bit string of a XORed with s is going to be less than b x or s. Why? Recall our earlier discussion that 1000 is going to be larger than all other numbers that start with a 0 and have the same length. In this case, if b x or s is going to have 1 in the leftmost bit position and a x or s is going to have a 0, then the smallest possible value of b x or s is going to be 1000 and the largest possible value of a x or s is going to be 0111 and 0111 is less than 1000. So given that information, we can do a greedy search for maximal bit strings. We'll scan from left to right and examine XOR products. For every index at which there is an XOR product of 1 with no one number and an XOR product of 0 with another number, we can immediately eliminate the bit string that resulted in the 0 XOR product, because we know that bit string will not give us the maximal XOR product. So that's great news, but we still have two major problems. One, we don't have a fixed bit string S we're told to only return the maximal XOR product among strong pairs. Second, if we compare each bit with all other bits of all other numbers in the array, this could still end up being an n-squared algorithm again. Let's first address strong pairing. If we sort our array first, then it turns out it's really easy to keep track of strong pairs. If you have a sorted array, then each element is naturally surrounded by numbers that make a strong pair with that element. For example, if you have 1, 5, 6, 7, 15, 20, and x is currently 5, then 6 and 5 are going to be a strong pair, 7 and 5 are going to be a strong pair, but once you reach 15, 15 and 5 have a difference of 10, which is larger than 5. You don't even need to check if 20 and 5 are a strong pair, because if the array is sorted, then the difference between 5 and any number beyond 15 is going to be at least 10, which we already know does not make a strong pair. So that's how we address the first problem. We'll always keep a window of numbers available for comparison until we find the first number that violates the strong pair condition, which can be done be if we sort the array. For the second problem, we need a fast way of comparing multiple bits across all the numbers in our strong pair window. This may seem impossible, but let me pose an alternate problem to you, and I think it will give you a really good idea of what to do. Once again, let's say our bit string is s, and it's 1000. Then, among our available strong pair numbers, we look for a prefix of 0, because 0 x for 1 gives us a 1. If we find a number with a 0 in the first bit position, we then look for a prefix of 0, 1, because 0, 1, x4, 1, 0 gives us 1, 1, the maximum prefix for the first two bit positions. And then after that, we look for a prefix of 0, 1, 1, and then finally 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, now let's replace these bits with letters. If s were straw and we were prefix searching for a maximal prefix match, then we would first search for an s, then st, then str, and then stra. How would you efficiently search for the maximum matching prefix among multiple strings? Well, you'd use a try. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Instead of using letters as nodes, we're going to represent bits in our try nodes. Let's walk through an example. Let's say we have the number 1000, and we want to check for the maximal XOR prefix among numbers 0101 and 0110. Our prefix try will look like the following. So we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, which are the two numbers that we're checking against. At the first level of the try, we only have one choice, 0. So we go down that path. 
our XOR total at this point is going to be the pink one XOR with the yellow zero. This gives us a one. At the second level, we also only have one choice, one. Our XOR product is now going to be the result of XORing this pink zero with this yellow one added to the previous result right shifted by one. So that's going to be two times one plus one, which is equal to three. At the next level, we have a choice of both zero and one. Since we want the maximal XOR product, we choose the one because the pink zero X word with the yellow one will give us a one. So our total now is going to be the previous result, again, right shifted by one, which is going to be three times two, plus the result of X oring zero with one, which gives us seven. Finally, at the last level, we also only have one choice, which is zero. Zero X or zero is zero. So our final total is going to be the previous result, right shifted by one, which is going to be seven times two equals to 14. So that's how we're going to search through our try. At each index of our bit string, we'll choose the bit in our try that gives us an XOR of one if possible. Okay, so that's how we're going to resolve both of our problems here, and we're ready to go through the implementation. This is not one of those videos where we're going to speed through the code. We'll walk carefully through and slowly too. First, we'll sort our array and, init and initialize some variables. We'll then iterate through our array and insert the current number into our try which represents our bit strings. I here is going to be a lagging pointer behind J. We'll use the I index to remove bit strings from our try that do not make a strong pair with element J. Once again, due to the fact that our array is sorted, once nums J minus nums I is no longer greater than nums I, we know that all remaining elements in our try must form a strong pair with nums J. Since all remaining elements in our try must form a strong pair with J, we then update our result to be the maximum of our existing result and the maximum XOR that we can find in a try, and then we return our result. Okay, so our main code, code looks pretty simple, and the devil's going to be in the try details. Our try node is going to have at most two children, representing bits 0 and 1. It's also going to have a count. A node's count represents the number of bit strings that form a strong pair with element J, that have a prefix from the root all the way to the current node. That was a super long sentence that was really important. So make sure you got that before you continue because it'll be important later. Okay, then we'll define our try. The root is just an empty try node. Our insert and delete operations are going to be almost identical. The only difference really is that an insertion is going to increase the count attribute on the nodes and the deletion is going to decrease the count attribute so we'll have both methods call into this helper method, traverse and apply, one passing in a different increment amount, one and negative one. The first thing this helper method will do is convert the value from an integer into a bit string. So our convert op method will take the binary representation of the number, and here we need to slice off the first two elements because bin of an integer gives us a zero B prefix before the actual bit string. So if the length of the bit string is less than 20, we pad the left side with zeros because remember, the greedy approach I mentioned before only works if we're comparing bit strings of the same length. And since in the problem description, we're told that all numbers are less than or equal to two to the 20 minus one, we know that all numbers can be represented in 20 bits or fewer. Then heading back to the helper method, we'll start our traversal at the root. If we're inserting a bit string, then we need to create a new try node if there's currently a none value at that location. If the node already exists, then all we really need to do is visit that node and increment its count. If we're deleting a bit string from the try, then we're going to decrease the value of that node's count by one. And now finally, let's implement find max. This method is going to traverse the try, finding the maximum possible XOR with the provided value. So first, we'll convert our value into a bit string. We'll then start at the root and initialize our value to zero. For each bit in the bit string, we'll check if one minus bit exists in the current node's children. This is because if we have a one, we want to XOR with a zero if possible. And if we have a zero, we want to XOR with a one if possible. If the XOR complement exists and it has a count greater than zero, then we want to go down that path in the try. We'll then right shift our existing it result by one and by multiplying by two, and then we'll also add one to our total, where this one represents the XOR product between zero and one of the current bit index. If the XOR complement does not exist, 
then that means we only have a single path to traverse at this point in the try. So we traverse down this path, and we right shift the running XOR result without adding a 1, since we weren't able to XOR the current bit with its complement. And then, once we're done iterating through the bit string, we can return the final XOR result. Alright, so that's how you do this. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this helpful. That's how you do this problem in super clean Python code. I'll see you in the next video.